Um, but what I really want to talk about is that they have agreed to not um, accept wildcard entries for rookies on, you know, to get rookies more experienced driving, which is something that you and I talked about a few months ago about, you know, should the, the question and, the, and I'll, I'll clip it up here was should teams be obligated to drive an F2 driver or a rookie driver in an F1 race right and now? Wait, pause, pause, pause. Pausing. When you say rookie, it's not like Ollie Behrman next year. It's like someone who currently is not in a seat. Yes. They would have to do it. Just want to yeah, yeah, yeah. clarify yeah, exactly. and differentiate so, there. Yeah. So right now the, the rule is, and I do like this rule, is that every team is obligated to give one rookie driver in their stable, so to speak, an appearance in a free practice session, free practice one. Every driver on the grid has to be has to give up one free practice session right. for a driver. So Max has to do it. Logan Sargent has to do it. Everyone does it. And it, it's, it's an opportunity for these rookie drivers that are in F2 or that are the reserve driver who have not had any Formula One race experience like a Jack Dewan um, from Alpine they are they they can get in the car and they can do that and then the other question that that came after Saudi Arabia when Ali Behrman finished P7 was should teams be obligated to drive um a rookie driver in an actual race and yeah. the consensus was no and the consensus is still no because you know people pay hundreds thousands of dollars to travel all over the world to watch Fernando Alonso drive in a race. They're not going to want to plan something out a year in advance to go to say Belgium and then finally get to Belgium to see their favorite driver. And oh no, it's not Fernando Alonso in the car on race day. Like that well, besides would be that, bad. even I think the bigger thing is that it would completely skew the drivers' championship and constructors. Yes. Like yes. it's just there's too many very and those are. Once you start messing with the institution, you it loses its value. Right. So it's like people are like, oh, well, yeah. Like Max, like let's take Max out of it. So let's say, I don't know, uh, Lando. Like, yes, Lando won the, the driver's championship. But, you know, with the race that Max wasn't in and the race is here and well, it would be asterisk. You know what I mean? Right. Like it wouldn't be a true, it wouldn't be real. No, it wouldn't. It would be fake. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the, the point is, is that yet, yes, other motorsport series have wildcard entries. Obviously the F1 Academy features wildcard entries. MotoGP as one of the more, you know, established series also has a wildcard system that works for them. But I don't think F1 is the place for a wild card entry, no. especially if it's, you know, if it's not, if, if it's in replacement of a current driver. If it's adding a car to the grid, that's one thing, like what F1 Academy does. But then you still have a question of what team is going to supply the car? What manufacturer is going to supply that power unit? Like who is going to supervise the rookies and, and do that. So it really, it, it's, it's not something that within the current structure of formula one that I think would work well and still takes away from the fact that formula two as an institution is not doing enough to prepare rookie drivers for formula one. And it's formula two needs to grow it, it increase its budget, have a, a faster, more competitive car that is, you know, not completely in line with the F1 cars, but is closer to it than what we have now. And then you have a little less of that gap between, you know, what a rookie, you know, drives in F2 to what they're seeing, which is completely different in F1. Right. This is not an F1 problem. It's an F2 problem. Exactly. Yeah. That, that is fundamentally the, the issue.